everyone, this is uh, iBlock TV. My name is Michael, and we are here on the Malta AI and Blockchain Summit. I'm here with Nicolas Fareke, and he's a chief of operation for crypto in the company Cash Free. Cash Free is aiming to make life simpler for merchants and for their customers, make payments easy, and exclude expensive uh, third parties. So, Nicolas, um, I would like to discuss with you a little bit today about the changes that are happening today on the, uh, regarding payment services. So, um, we have two main factors, I see. One is the PSD2 regulation that came into effect last year uh, in Europe, and we have the cryptocurrencies. But uh, first, let us uh, tell a little bit more, a little bit about yourself and about your company. In brief. Thank you. So um, my background is uh, economics. And so a few years back, I got uh, touched by the virus of blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Um, I became a big fan. And so my previous company, uh, we supplied um, liquidity services in the cryptocurrency space. However, um, I found that that wasn't really moving the crypto space forward as I would like it to. And that's why I joined Cash Free. And uh, we are trying to make cryptocurrencies what they should be, which are a means of payment and not necessarily a means of uh, speculation. So that's our vision and that's what we're trying to achieve. Okay, thank you. So um, let's let's uh, start with the PSD2. So could you explain to our viewers what PSD2 is uh, on a high level, why it is important and how it is changing the payment services? Very good. So, I, like, I know that here in Malta, at the Blockchain Summit, we like to make fun of governments and all the regulations that they imply on us. Um, but I would like to say that PSD2 is a very good uh, effort from them to open up the payment space. So before PSD2, payments were mostly done through the so-called four-party network. And I'm talking about European payments. And there, there's a lot of players like Visa and MasterCard who take their share of each uh, of the profit of each transaction made. Which means that payments for merchants are very expensive. If you pay with a Visa card, it's easily up to 2.5% that you have to pay of the transaction value. Uh, and that can become a lot and very significant. So the European Union actually saw this and wanted to do something about this. And that's why they come up, came up with PSD2. PSD2 allows third parties to access the banks of the users with their consent. And so that allows people who have a bank account to um, get financial services from startups and from uh, third parties and not necessarily rely on these big corporations and these big banks. And that is what Cashtree is doing. So we are a payment initiation service, service provider and we can, with your consent or with our users' consent, initiate payments from their bank accounts, put them straight on a merchant's bank account. Hereby, we bypass the four-party model that we mentioned before, and that way we make payments real-time, seamless, and a lot cheaper for the merchant who accepts them. Thank you. And um, let's let's have a look at the cryptocurrencies. So uh, they, the mo most obvious use case for cryptocurrencies is obviously payments, but still we don't see many average people using cryptocurrencies for payments. So what do you think? Why is that? So, I think there are three main reasons why that is. The first reason is uh, price volatility. So right now, because cryptocurrencies go up and down, and on the long term they keep going up, a lot of people see them more as a speculative asset um, and a way to make money. And as they can't rely on them to keep the same price level, and I, I know there are stable coins, but I'm, I'm keeping those apart for now, I think that it's gonna take a while before they'll be used or they'll have a stable value. So in my opinion, in a few years' time, we will see that the Bitcoin has reached a certain level that it's, it kind of stays at, uh, but this might take some time. And so this is one of the reasons why we're not using cryptocurrencies to pay every day. The second reason um, is scalability. I know everyone talks about this, um, and right now it's still a bit too expensive and a bit too slow to do on-chain transactions. Again, I also think that this is a matter of time. So with new um, evolutions in the technology, we'll see uh, you know, off-chain or side-chains or sharding or all these new technologies come up, and these will lead to um, 
easy and fast and cheap transactions on chain but it's not there right now and then the third reason why we, i believe that we're not using crypto to pay is the complexity of the technology right now if you're an average user and you want to use some cryptocurrencies to pay you have to set up your wallet you have to make an account on an exchange um, you have to send money to that exchange and then you have to retract the money to your wallet and then you can start using those cryptos to pay um, and on top of that if you look up how many stores you can actually go to to start paying with cryptocurrencies is very minimal because again merchants uh, they have to pay their bills at the end of the month and as long as the asset that they're receiving for their services or goods can fluctuate 10% in a week uh, they're at risk and so they they don't really like accepting that and so that's um, that's also a problem that, that that's the industry faces right now so considering these developments how do you see uh, how do you see the roles of the banks in the near future like in two years five years ten years so I think on the medium term what's happening with PSD2 is uh, as I said before the um, they have to open up their API's to offer financial service providers um, the possibility to offer financial services to the people that own the bank accounts which means that in the short to medium future banks will not no longer be the ones that su su that supply you with a, you know banking app uh, and a payment card etc it's actually going to be uh, small companies startups that are great at ux and ui that will take that place and banks will actually just become uh, you know platforms where you have the bank account and everything on top of that bank account is being offered by different service providers who are specifically very good at what they do and they offer great UI and UX. If you then look at the longer term, uh, I think that at certain points, banks are going to become phased out. I think they still have a value as, you know, safe store of, uh, of you know, your net worth. You know, if you have a lot of cryptos, uh, you can either put them in your, uh, in your vault or you can give them to a bank who then uh, ensures that you will receive the total value uh, even if something crazy happens. And so I think there, there's still some value. But apart from that, I think that a lot of banks are going to be going bankrupt in the next uh, in the next decade, and I don't see a lot. I, I don't see what they can do to stop it. So that's a very interesting time coming. Um, so, what do you think? What are now the best opportunities for startups and uh, smaller companies that are specialized for some specific services? Ah, that's a good question. So, I mean, the PSD2 regulation opens up doors to all kinds of players. I mean, uh, we at Cashery, we are we want to be the payments app of choice, um, but you can also become, you know, a banking app. Uh, you could become. There's so many things that are now possible with the access that has been opened up to users' bank accounts. And if you're really good at building a great experience, a great user experience, uh, there are so many new things you can start doing. Because if you look at the average bank uh, banking app. It's 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 not very good to be honest, and I mean it's they can be so much better. But banks, I mean, I've been a consultant at a bank, and it takes a long time for them to adopt to new technologies, to what the user wants, uh, to be agile. Uh, and startups are just better at that. And now startups can finally take care of the financial services, and banks um, uh, are left with what they're good at, which is being a very uh, old and solid platform, uh, yeah, bank as a service. Okay, and um, let's say, so what would you say, what is your strength? What are you doing? How, uh, what is your idea to make better this payment services in the whole ecosystem? So, example given, not only the technology or user experience, but also who are your main clients? Who are you targeting and why? Yeah, so what we intended, what we started out to do is two things. From the user side, from the user side, we try to make payments fun, easy, and convenient. And the key word there is fun. Right now, if you buy something, the payment is is it's like every time like a, a necessary evil that kind of ruins the, the the experience. And that's what we want to make uh, make better. So we want to give our users a fun experience. They can uh, just use their mobile phone to pay. They get some rewards every time they pay, and. Every time they pay, they get more chance at winning uh, some prizes. So that's what we do on the user side. And on the merchant side, it's actually way more simple. So as I already said, traditionally, merchants accept payments um, using you know, this payment terminal where you put in the cards, and that's very expensive. 
And so we want to offer an alternative for these big corporations that offer payment services, you know, a small startup um, that will allow you to accept payments in uh, like as cheaply as possible, as cost efficient as possible. Um, and so that's our proposition to them. And so key in our business is this relation with the merchants. So we need to acquire users on one side and merchants on the other side. And so I, I would say that that is what we are specifically good at. It's being able to find a balance between digital marketing aimed at users and a feed on the ground sales team that visits the merchants. Right? Because if you only have merchants and no users, no one's going to use your payment system. And the same is true when you have a lot of users, but no one accepts uh, your payment systems. So we need to find a balance. And that's, I think, key in this business. And that's what we've, been, what we've proven to be good at. How uh, difficult it is for a merchant to set up your payment service? You mean to start accepting payments? Uh, that, that, that's also key. Like that's what we focused on to make it as easy as possible. So traditionally, if a, if a, if a merchant wants to start accepting payments, they have to get to this payment terminal, and there's an initialization cost. There's a monthly subscription fee. You have to buy or rent the terminal, and then on top of, on top of that, there's payment processing fees, which happen on every payment. With Cash Free, the only thing they need is a smartphone. And from that moment, they can start accepting Cash Free payments uh, because they can just use the app. Um, there's no initialization fee, there's no subscription fee, you don't have to pay for the download. They just pay a very low fixed fee for every transaction made. That sounds really, really simple. So um, you already have a working product, right? So. Um, where is it used now? So which markets are covering now and what's your uh, roadmap? Very good. So right now, so we are based in Belgium. And so uh, in our home city, which is Ghent, we already did our go-to markets. And that's where we're proving our go-to markets. And now we have about 6,000 users and about uh, 350, 400 merchants. Um, we are starting in Belgium. And once we have acquired the most uh, biggest cities, because I talked before about our balance between digital marketing and feet on the ground. And so we have to go in a city by city approach, a bit like Airbnb did. So we go from one city, we acquire it, we cash free the city, and then we go to the next city that we also cash free and then we move on, move on, move on. And so after Belgium, we also plan to go to the Netherlands, Luxembourg and France. And then after that, uh, we look at Germany, we look at Spain and perhaps Eastern Europe as well. Okay, Nicolas, thank you very much. I wish you all the luck with your project. Uh, this is iBlock TV. My name is Michael. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you.